Okay, thank you, Sophie. So I hope we're all here. <clears throat> Just wait till everybody checks back in. Some lovely pictures on your um, profiles. Quite envious. <laughs> Especially yours, Kate, you're running with a beautiful horse. Uh, North Norfolk. It was, oh. uh, yeah, it was my little Icelandic also behind me on the wall. <laughs> and, oh, it's uh, lovely. Yeah, yeah, I see running with him on the beach. Oh. Yeah, that looks like an amazing experience. Okay, um, so I've been, I'm very, very grateful for having the opportunity um, over the last, um, this is my third session here, to share um, with you and with people that have come previously um, a strategy that I'm really um, developing along with the Permaculture Association to promote permaculture and mental health. Um, and it's early days, um, really how, how this is kind of working. So I really do appreciate having the opportunity to come here and share these tools with you. Um, so what this is about really is how I can share with you how I have used permaculture to help me um, in my mental health. Um, I suffer from anxiety and depression. I'm a highly sensitive person and a sense, the medical term is sensory processing sensitivity. Um, so I find the world a really overwhelming place. Everything just um, goes far, far too fast. Um, and I have found that permaculture is something that I always step back into, you know, whether it's um, the principles, whether um, it's using some kind of framework or whether it's tools that I have learned along the way in relation to, um, yeah, to, to doing teaching practice um, and just to own courses and within the permaculture world. But a big part of that as well is just my own personal things that I have found that I've added to what I call permaculture toolkit. And so each um, time I've come here, I'm, I've been sharing one of the tools that um, I have used in the past, but also that we teach on part of our um, intro to permaculture. And we have a couple of permaculture, social permaculture sessions at the end. Um, so for those of you who have already uh, seen me, I hope, you know, forgive me if I'm repeating anything, um, but hopefully it's, it's still valuable all the time. And what I wanted to do today was um, do some visioning practice. So I don't know if any of you have ever done any visioning before, um, but I've, when I've gone um, through situations where I've really, really struggled um, with adversity and really don't know how to shift forward, um, absolutely stuck, extremely depressed, going to a dark place, um, what do I do? And sometimes all the usual tools that I might find, maybe, you know, using principles such as small and slow solutions, um, I found it really, really, really hard to shift forward. So I found just doing a vision in practice really helpful in becoming unstuck. And it, it's, it's not even setting a particular goal or a particular dream. It's just sitting with it and... Um, doing some kind of visioning kind of in the moment to help me shift forward and then from there generally can build I can build on things can build on on something and then may use one of the other permaculture processes um, that I've developed or it could be for from from something else so what I'd like to do today is just to um, share with you how I use this tool um, so I hope you've managed to get a pen, piece of paper. Hello to those of you that I've met before. Hi, Marta, as well. <laughs> Good to see you again. Um, yeah, so hopefully you've got a, a pen. A pen is fine. Pencil, anything at all that you can write or draw with. Um, and there is no wrong or right to this. Um, as within permaculture, there isn't. So it's just what actually suits you. So what I would like you to do right now and can I just really stress that I can appreciate um, not everybody wants to go through a process of talking about their mental health or sharing anything um, personal so 
um, I would like to invite you after we've gone through this little activity that I've done to actually share um, what we've actually done. But if you don't feel that you can actually do that, then that's absolutely fine as well. OK, but the process of this is to really show how you can use a, a particular tool. And sometimes sharing that process with others in a group is really helpful. And that actual group process in itself can really help um, one shift forward. So what I would like you to do, um, what I invite you to do, is to think of a situation um, either that you're facing right now or that you may, may have done in the past, but I think if we can kind of maybe keep, perhaps keep it to the present, um, where you perhaps may be struggling with a particular um, situation in your life. It could be a job, it could be um, a relationship, it could be and be, for example, anything to do with COVID, especially at the moment where, um, you know, we've, we've got another situation going on again at this time of year and when it's all dark and everything sort of slows down a bit, it can actually bring us more into ourselves and, and we have to really touch base with uh, our, I guess, our inner landscape in that way. So I'm going to invite you in a moment for a couple of minutes just to think of something that you're really struggling with um and that you you really you just don't know how to find a way forward it could even be something that you perhaps try to help a friend with or um somebody who you know is struggling with something so perhaps you can use that as well as a as a as a part of the process so just for a couple of minutes i'm going to ask you to think about something so just in silence um feel free to close your eyes do any kind of meditation on it however you feel and just to think of something that um, is, you know, it doesn't have to be too profound. It can be something quite simple or it can be as, as profound as you want it to be that you, you feel you might like to use this tool to help you become unstuck, if you like. So just for a couple of minutes, I'm just going to going to sit and think if that's OK. And feel free to turn your screens off or whatever, but so what I would like to invite you to do is with this situation in your mind is to write it to either draw. Uh, an image, imagine yourself in a, in a certain situation, a place where this, um, this process is happening to you and to draw whatever comes up for you that, um, that just, just feels natural. So like a free, free draw, nothing, nothing um, no, no particular goal with a drawing, but just draw anything that you can envisage that can take you a step out of this particular situation or write down um, words, but just one word. Don't write sentences, just write um, any, any words that come to you. You can do both as well. You can do both, there's, there's no either or here, but just either do a drawing or words that help, that you feel can help shift you towards it or that just flows naturally from you. So we're just gonna do this for about five minutes. And then I'd really like to get um, people's feedback if, to, if you feel able to do it. Okay, so do um, to draw or just write several words down, anything at all, anything at all.
Okay. Sometimes I, I think this process doesn't seem like there's, there's actually much to it. Um, I've used it, as I say, I've used it a couple of times and I've like, okay, yeah, I, I can really shift forward my thinking now. So I'd like to invite uh, anyone to just share um, what your thoughts were and whether you use drawing words and how you how you just found doing this this process. I would just like to add that this normally this is done on a much longer kind of scale, but because of the, the short time frame here, it's so uh, I've can condensed it down a bit. So is there anyone who would just like to would like who just like to share what you've done? Yeah, I will. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. That's all right. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. Uh, where well, we start with this? I mean, I think there are obviously a lot of people and probably all the people that have gathered here today watching and listening to this who can access, you know, cognitive therapy or talking therapy. And, and that's a wonderful thing, you know, that, that obviously helps people enormously. And, and, and that's why most therapies are based on some sort of, you know, cognitive behavioral stuff or, um, or, or some sort of talking therapy. Um, but there are a lot of people that, that can't access that, you know, children, for example, uh, a lot of people that I've worked with, refugees, um, people with special needs and so on. And, um, you know, those are the people that really need help. We, we are the ones that are developing these skills and sitting here listening to your wonderful talk. And, um, you know, when you say think about somebody else and, and how you've helped somebody else, you know, I, I think about sort of 35 years of dealing with special needs kids, kids on the attest, autistic spectrum and, you know, kids that are in the village here and how, how I would help them deal with difficult situations. And, you know, I, I wouldn't suggest, oh, come around and have a chat. Um, you know, I would, I would say to them, well, let's do something that I know will raise the serotonin levels, you know, such as exercise um, and uh, things like that, you know, and practical activities. Um, and then, you know, there's the whole thing of, you mentioned winter and, and how do you deal with uh, seasonally affected uh, people. Um, and uh, I have a sauna in my house. I have a, uh, an infrared sauna here and, and that helps me greatly. Um, and, uh, you know, a re re replacement for summer, if you like, uh, winter activities. And, um, and then you asked to, to us to, to write a few words down. So I, I, I wrote here, what helps me is human solidarity. That's the biggest one, you know. I exercise, I go to saunas and steam, and I do some yoga, and I go walking and running. But, but for me, the number one is is human solidarity and companionship, social interaction, uh, wherever you can get it. I think you know that for me ranks as number one above above all the other things. And and then I drew a little picture as well, well um, which was. Um, I'm a musician. I was a mu music teacher in the UK before I retired, and so I, I drew a, I drew a little picture. I drew a little picture of the mixing desk there because that's the other thing that that helps me. And you know, having been to sort of talking therapy myself and done cognitive behavioural therapy f for my work with special needs children, um, I always found it the day after a really heavy day dealing with some, you know enormous problems in work that running cycling and saunering and doing those practical things really hit the mark for me in, in a way that um talking therapies didn't and, and i don't know whether that's a male thing whether, whether men are more likely to to say what i'm saying or not but th those are my observations anyway thanks steve for, for sharing that that was great um and thank you for your your drawing as well and um yeah and for you know the talking about different other ways of dealing with things like the cognitive behavior therapy and talking therapies and how we can find different different methods thank you so much for sharing your story we really do appreciate it would anybody else like to follow on from steve i just want I don't to mind. Mind sharing. Oh. sorry sophie just to say there's five minutes left of the session. 
Okay, yeah, right, thank you. Five minutes, thank you. Sorry, Kate, please do. Yeah, share. I can I can share quickly. Um, yeah, um, you said, Steve, about solidarity and funny enough, I because I've been um it's made me feel so much better to know that Rakesh, who I consider like a superhuman, has been ill as well. Um, because, because I really don't like being ill and I've been ill for like the last three weeks with a chest or well, yeah, three weeks with a chest infection. And it's really something that mentally I my anxiety flares up around being ill. So I've drawn myself in bed and I've written the words uh, alone, ill, worry, fear and should, because I think should is this word that's um, a bit problematic, you know. Um, but actually one of, the, one of the things I drew there was people talking. And I think it's that same thing is with COVID, we're so isolated um, that yesterday I met with some friends on the beach for solstice and just having other people around me to be able to just it was all to say what was a bit crap going on in each of our lives was um, so therapeutic, I think, for all of us to be able to do that, because I think it's really easy for us all to go, well, I shouldn't feel bad about how I'm feeling because somebody else has it way worse than me. And I think as soon as you all get together, you all can actually empathise with each other. You can support each other and then you stop worrying about yourself because you're worrying about someone else instead a little bit. Um, and I also just put there, it's OK to rest because I don't know about other people but I find it really hard to um I really find it hard to rest so uh so yeah this this group has been just coming to these sessions has been very therapeutic today because I feel less alone and uh also that I'm not a bit pathetic which is how you can feel or how I can feel when I'm ill oh thanks Kate that's that's um that's fantastic and yeah, I think it, it's great to hear other people um, sharing their stories as well, because then, you you know, you do get this solidarity from it and you think, actually, do you know what? I'm normal. <laughs> you know, other people experiencing this and what I'm experiencing um, doesn't make me strange, doesn't make me weird. And, and part of what I like to promote and what I'm a big advocate for uh, being a mind campaigner is to talk about um, mental health, poor mental health as well. You know, just it's there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's this is who we are as people, and there's all different people that make the world go around. Um, we haven't got uh, long. Would anybody else like to um, do one last share? Yeah, I, I can share what I what I've done. And Thank so you, Teresa. I'm dealing with like stress and anger quite often, and particularly now a lot of stress at work and things like that. So I, I really like to focus on on something that um like when drawing. So I like to draw flowers and and particularly like the lotus flower. And like in context, then I sort of write the stuff that really upsets me. And then I make clouds around it because at the end of the day, this is things that eventually disappear. It's like a cloud in the sky. So if I imagine it's the cloud and I focus on something that is nice and pretty, it will go away eventually. I mean, it's still there. It exists. But, you know, it's, it's not that uh, difficult or harsh. That's how I deal with it. Oh, thank you. I love your lotus flower. <laughs> and I, I love the imagery of um, we have these things here in, in our heads and then, you know, they can float away and they do. And I think when you're in that moment, when, you know, you, you know that, but you forget it. And it's like at that moment, it's not going to go away, but it does. And we do come out the other side but it's how we can deal with those processes and how we can actually get to the other side. So having all these different tools and techniques and it's, it's lovely to hear um, and see your drawing. So thank you, Teresa, for sharing. Um, I, I don't think, I don't think we've, I think we're up for time now. Um, Sophie, are we, is it about time? Okay. I, so I'll just quickly um, close for this next um so next month, what I'm going to be doing here, I'm assuming I'm going to be allowed to come back next month. Um, I would like to be able to share um, the, the design web. So Libby McNamara's design web, if you um, don't know if you know about her, but I'm going to um, try and do some more work on that and dip into these tools a bit deeper. So I'm going to touch base with that and how I've actually used that um, for my uh, mental health as well. So if you're interested, please do bring people along as well, because these are such great sessions. So. Thank you very much. And thank you, everybody, for sharing. Really do appreciate it. Take care.